everybody. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so Ashley may or may not join us tonight. Shay couldn't, and I don't think Andrew's joining, so we'll see. But either way, we're going to have fun. We're going to talk about Daja's book by Tamara mm -hmm. Pierce. And uh, yeah, welcome, Bree. You caught up on the books. We're so I'm so happy to oh have you. Oh my god, that was that's real cool. I'm sorry, I was trying to get on screen. What you say? <laughs> oh, no. I said you caught up on the books. I'm ha glad you made it. I am ready. <laughs> and we have Kara. Let's go check them Hello. out. Hello. <laughs> um. How is everybody doing tonight? Hey, Jessica. Hi, Renee. Um, so, book three, Daja's book. Thoughts, anybody? How did this go? Can I say one thing? Yeah. <laughs> Only one? <laughs> Only one? Only one, though. You get one for the whole live show. <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> um, this is the situation. Daja is a black girl, correct? Mm -hmm. I've never seen that name pronounced that way. It's always been Deja. So mm -hmm. I was very confused oh. as a black person hearing whatever y'all just said. Because I might be pronouncing it wrong. But that's the, what the audiobook says too. So I was oh, like, really? is giving Deja? <laughs> <laughs> I said... So I don't know if the, the narrator is white, black. No, I don't know. But I was like, not, nope, not nope, we making this sound French. We're just, just getting regular old Anglo-Saxon. I mean, you may be right. It is. It may be Deja. I don't know. I just, I think that's just like how I assumed it was in my head. But right, that's how I was I kind know. of pronouncing it as I read. But there's, I have no reason why. <laughs> like, no, same. Deja. Let's go with that. Um, hi, Jen. Hi, Vicky. Renee loves the look, Brie. It's a look. <laughs> it's a look. I like the blanket. Come to expect Andrew to never be. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe one day. We'll see. My um, yes, we love Brie. You always have great plants. Brie oh, does yeah. look like a movie. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Tamara narrated her own book? Really? Did she narrate these? No, I don't know. Oh, and no. I feel okay. Oh, that's interesting. I want to see. Uh, um, narrated by Tamara Pierce the, and the full cast family. Yeah. I don't know who the full cast family is, but okay. So yeah, I mean, I guess maybe it was intended to be. That's interesting. Oh, okay. Daja Kisubo. In the pronunciation guide. They had a pronunciation guide? <laughs> Well, <laughs> apparently. You in your bag. You I in your it. bag. You're the guide. I, okay, this is interesting. So my edition has a glossary of Mind like, us trigger too. talk words, but it, I don't think this one has pronunciation. Maybe well, she might, I mean, Tamar, Tamara Pierce has been around long enough. She might also just have a website with stuff like that, uh -huh. but I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> Nothing all about the book. Have you downloaded the stuff here? Oh, yeah. What? Today is summer something. You can download a bunch of romances for zero dollars. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so Jen says it's online. That's interesting. Okay, yeah. so apparently yeah, according to the pronunciation guide, Daja is Duba. It is Daja. Her website is good. Good to know. Okay. Um, but how did you guys do with this one? 
And uh, Bree, if you want to talk about the last book too, you can, since I know you missed the uh, the chat. Oh yeah, I can weave it all in. <laughs> Bree, oh, do you want to go first? Am I going first? Sure. Oh okay. <laughs> Y'all weren't gonna tell me my my glasses was like this the whole time. <laughs> I thought it, I thought it was a uh, an intentional choice. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just so here. <laughs> what up? What up? What up? <laughs> um, what it? I I don't know how to describe it. So, for the most part, if not more than most part, I enjoy this book. What I really liked is, um, and it also was in book three as well of the adults in their lives just trying to get them to understand that you can't play with everything like it could literally be a life or death situation and i feel like it's important for kids to get those messages as they go older because we all know children have a tendency to think that they are invincible but they are not mm -hmm. so i really appreciated them talking about the seriousness of using mad magic wielding magic was the same thing um borrowing magic like just you know being very conscious of that um we also got to see how the adults in their lives made mistakes in front of them and like corrected those mistakes and helped them understand that you can learn from those mistakes um, and then identity, like when we're talking about the traders and the different types of like clans or tribes and the one lady who was like not having it, like, oh, we're around these traders kind of situation. Um, it just really made me think of like, you may be born into things or, um, having to feel like you have to forcefully be a part of an identity because your family or people that you love are also sharing those identities. That doesn't mean you have to subscribe to it. That doesn't mean you have to only think that that's the only way to go. And I thought that when I thought of, when I think about people who are like, we're fundamentalists, whatever that is, and decided, you know, I'm going to head out or, you know, people who are part of a cult or whatever it is, it just, it really shine light on how you can really be, what you want to be and don't have to feel like you have to force yourself to be in a box that was never meant for you anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have really liked throughout the series how it feels like even though the main characters are the kids, like the kids and the adults are given the same amount of respect as far as like the narration and the characterization. Cause that's something I always appreciate. Like, regardless of what the target age is or who the main characters are. It's like, if I read a book that has like adults and kids in it, I want them both to feel like real people. Like we might spend more time with some, um, but they're all written about in a way that like, like the adults in these books are not just like obstacles, you know, to the kids mm -hmm. like getting to do cool, cool stuff. Um, yeah. And I really appreciated getting to know all of them and like seeing them all interact. And um, yeah, like I also really love how, like specifically in Dasha's book, like the complexity of her feelings about like the traitor culture, I think felt really nuanced and really like believable because like she has to, rec she's kind of grappling with the fact that like she feels differently about some of it now that she's on the outside and I thought that was just really well done because like, it's not an all or nothing thing. Um, it's not like she's a hundred percent in, or she's like, I never want to interact with my people ever again. It's like, she's somewhere in the middle and that makes it really hard for her. But I think that's a much more, I don't know, that feels much more true to life. You know, it is like, I think for a lot of people, it is hard to cut themselves off completely from a group or maybe they don't want to. And mm -hmm. I liked seeing Dasha kind of like, kind of be surprised that she's like, oh, I don't necessarily just want to drop everything and go back as if this never happened. Like at the end when she says, I could maybe give up smithing or I could give up the circle, but I definitely can't give up both. And mm -hmm. I just, yeah. Also it just, just touched I you. Love it touched you. That. Yeah. That really touched you right there. Yeah, yeah. That okay. That part where she's like thinking to herself, like it's the first time they meet um, 
oh, what is the other trader woman's name? I just read this and I can't remember her name. I can't um, remember no names, but I know what you're talking about. It's called oh, yeah. Polly something. Polly M. Yeah, Polly yeah. M. It's like I think the first time they're meeting, <laughs> and she's like talking about how well she like doesn't want to talk to her because she's like trying she and everything and the two like all of the other kids are just like instantly defending her and Daja has that moment internally where she's like huh I would die for them and I'm like I love you guys so much yeah I just every time we read one of these books I'm like are you my favorite character like I just love all of them <laughs> so much yeah it's hard to yeah. pick a fave but I ain't gonna lie, I am. I'm here with Daja, mm -hmm. and then when when one of them got their name cleared, yes, oh, uh, yeah. and they didn't really give a shit, really. You know, <laughs> like I'm still with them, I'm hanging out. You know, yeah, cool. yeah I love it. Let's see. Yes, you can be a Christian, but not an evangelical. Yeah, it will exactly like Daja doesn't can still value her culture without mm -hmm. agreeing with everything yes that they sort of subscribe to yeah hello hello we've got some new people hi hey no hi um yeah like, no i love this too hmm i was like wow book garden kara's in the chat you're Kara's also in the chat <laughs> I am I am in both. I can be two places at once. Yeah, I, one place. I don't know Amazing. where I went, but I said, oh my God, she's in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, no, I I just I love all of these books. I feel like I'm probably gonna end up just giving them all five stars just because yeah. they're such like I don't know, they make me happy. Um yeah. But this was cool because it was also the first one where you see them getting away from home. Yeah. And they're dealing with, like, some different stuff and getting stretched in new ways and um, figuring out, like, I don't know. What did you guys think of the solution for their magic being tangled up? I had forgotten I about that, but I like that. it. Oh. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, we're going to fix this with weaving? I love it here. <laughs> But also that it was like, instead of just untangling them entirely, yes. they were like, well, we are influencing each other and that's good. We just need more boundaries around it. Yes. yes. And I love that that was another opportunity for the adults, like their teachers to be like, okay, you guys have an idea about how to do stuff and we're going to keep you from doing something dangerous, but we hadn't <laughs> thought of it this way. Um, yeah, I really liked that as well. And I love that they didn't just, yeah, fix it and go back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. um, also, something like, kind of like you were saying earlier, Brie, I feel like the, all the books so far have done such a good job of like, like having the children, but they are also super powered. Like, and I feel like the, that's communicated to the reader really well. And I also feel like the adults, like you were saying, Bethany, it's like, they're working with them and they're kind of having to remind themselves like, okay, they may be able to like literally stop a volcano or something, but they are also still children. Exactly. Um, the one thing that I yeah. thought Nico was kind of not like overreacting exactly, but when he gets so angry at them because he finds out that they've been using magic for like additional chores, yeah. I, I was kind of like, I don't think that was one of the rules you told them, though. Like, no. he was like, I'm so disappointed in you. And I'm like, when did this come up? <laughs> like, Yeah, well, like, because I was like, really, is it true that you're wasting your magic? Like, right. is that how it works? Right. I thought maybe that something had happened that I just wasn't remembering. Because the way he was, like, talking about it was like, I've already told you this. And I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> like, yeah. Same. Same, same. Yeah, I, I had the same thought, actually. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Renee, <laughs> I, I would like only magic for chores. <laughs> Raise your hands if you hate cleaning the bathroom and doing laundry. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I will yeah. wash dishes and mop yeah. floors until I am blue in the face. But you want me to go and clean the toilet? But I have to clean the toilet because I judge other people's toilets. <laughs> but the toilet got to be clean. You know what I mean? Yeah. One way or another. I cleaned a lot of toilets growing up, so now I'm teaching my kids to clean their own toilet. 
Wow, you gotta pay him. You gotta let him know young. You oh, work yeah. They get, they get, they get allowance for chores. You know. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I like mm. how they did it, but I had a bit of a hard time visualizing the moment and how Sandry unweaved them. I guess in my brain, I saw it as just that she sort of like, just if they were all mashed together, she just sort of like, sh like scooped them into their own lanes and then did a border in between. Like that yeah. was kind of how they, I don't Yeah, because I think, I think the original plan or what like the adults were assuming they would do is that she would actually take that tangle and undo it yeah. and weave it. And she was like, well, what if I just like start from that tangle and then yeah, re-separate them. Like there was a point where I was like, I think you maybe need to know what a loom looks like a little more specifically than I do to like fully get it. But I mm -hmm. got the important stuff, which is like borders. Okay. Right. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. Yes, yes. I think it's because magic takes energy so you would need to really only use it when you need to yeah i and guess I especially that's... maybe Sorry, it's also ahead. just like they don't want them to get in the habit of using magic for everything right yeah because right. you know, they are going to be very powerful mages you know yeah. mm -hmm. and they i think they're i think the adults are afraid mm -hmm. that their power is going to make them be very known and it might get to their head and we have to do things to keep them humble yeah which is like do your damn chores yeah and like the magic taking energy makes sense and i feel like that has been something that they talked about i guess i was just surprised that like to me it seems like nico was acting like he specifically had like warned them about this that like someday they would need all their magic and they wouldn't have mm -hmm. any because they were playing games and it's like I don't remember this being something that you specifically warned them no. about. <laughs> well, you know what he did warn them about, though, which they had been doing right before then, is he had warned them about magically eavesdropping. Yes, oh, that's did. true. He that's did true. warn them about that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's kind it. of funny that, <laughs> like, the way it's done, because, like, them not following the rules is like literally the only way they hear about some of the stuff they need to hear about. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, I, I imagine, I imagine it's very difficult for all these adults as caretakers to be like, listen to us, never do this again <laughs> until the next time that you actually have to do it again to save yeah. everyone's lives. Right. 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 Oh, this is interesting. Jessica mm -hmm. said you needed to know about weaving and looms. The first time I read this, I didn't get that, but now I'm more familiar with weaving and looms and it was completely clear to me. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get that part at all. I was just like, okay, they weaved. All right. It yeah. works. <laughs> yeah. 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 And he told them someday they may need every ounce of magic they have. Yeah. 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 I also, in terms of the magic and like the, the, is he a fire mage? I guess you would call him. Um, or like mm -hmm. the putting out the fire mage. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought one thing that was, I, I mean, I was not sure that he was, gonna die but then after that happened i was like i should have expected this like tomorrow appears she does not like shy away from that you know from like actual yeah. consequences um which is something i appreciate but one thing that i thought was really interesting about that whole like fire plot line is like mm -hmm. it's it's an ecologically like really interesting thing for like a children's book to handle but i also appreciate that like his so like his whole thing is like you have to follow the rules and you like nature um or like natural magic or instinctive magic isn't as good and blah 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 and i feel like in a lot of books like it's very common for there to be like the rule following magic users and then like the instinctive magic users mm -hmm. and i feel like most of the time in the books that i've read it's like the instinctive magic is portrayed as clearly being like better or more useful or more like natural and even though that kind of happened in this book, I didn't feel like it was done in a way that was like too easy because like the problem wasn't that he wanted to use like steps. The problem is that he didn't value anybody else's method of doing right. magic. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but it felt different to yeah. me. Like it felt like, like it wasn't just a, you know, rules bad. <laughs> like. Well, I think it's that he had no, he also had no interest in anything else. Like he didn't want yes. to go see the glacier. He didn't want any, like it. basically if it wasn't his little tiny niche, 
that mm-hmm. he wasn't interested. And yes. so because of that, he had these major blind spots where he couldn't see how interconnected things are. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it, like the problem was that he refused to value anybody else's work. It wasn't necessarily like his work is the wrong way. It was the problem was that he was acting like everybody else's was the wrong way. Yeah, and that's good yeah. to have characters like that. Also yeah. another lesson for children, you know? Yeah. Be mindful of folks that interact like this. Yeah. It's like the arrogance, but also some of it too is like he clearly, you know, we know enough about his history that like he felt insecure. Yeah. about his magic and like so how much of it was coming out of like feel the need to like prove himself or perform that he's just as good as or better than other people yeah 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 so like also an interesting kind of message about like letting ego get in the way uh, kind of like letting your ego make important decisions for you mm-hmm. um, yeah yeah see oh yeah the other time an adult was angry was frost pine's anger about mm-hmm. the children giving up their magic to sandry interesting we see such strong emotions in the adults yeah i thought that was really interesting because he kind of storms off and then later calms down and explains you know yeah. how his own trauma made him yeah concerned which i just i love that these adults explain things to the kids <laughs> it's not just like yes, do what i say, say. I was just about to say, I love that he got angry. He yeah. stormed off, but he did explain why he was mm-hmm. angry and where it came yeah. from. So ultimately, it did teach her a lesson because, you know, a lot of children are um, naive and have and think most people have good intentions. Yeah. Um, and it was just like a cautionary tale. So. Yeah. 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 Well, and it's interesting because, like, I guess originally he didn't think he needed to be involved in making big decisions for the kids. So it's also just interesting to see how much more invested he's gotten in what's happening with them. Like, they're all four co-parents now. Like, that's just the way it is. (laughs) Which I love. I love it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there are wildfires everywhere. Mm -hmm. We've got smoke in our city again from the Canadian wildfires. They're, like, even talking about, like, controlled burns in this book. And it's, like, good for you, like, teaching kids about that. That's important. But then they're also, like, they have copper mines and stuff. And they're melting the glacier. I was, like... No, don't melt the glacier. I know. I like. I got to that part and I was like, oh, this is okay. It reads a little differently now, but all right. I also was like, don't go exploring a, a glacier. Don't go that. Don't go see what it looks like. I mean, no. yeah, I know it's going to be in there. That's true. No. That's true. Mm-mm. Oh, my gosh. Yes, look at these adults dealing with their trauma in slightly healthy ways. True story, yeah. true story. Um, yes, unfortunately, I would suggest um, you can still find them on eBay for not too much. They're out of print. That's why this is a problem. Um, but you can like you can find them on eBay is probably the best place to look, or you can do the ebook or audiobook, but. Oh, yeah, I, that was on my to-do list, and then I got busy, but I did want to make, like, a petition about, like, them putting Honestly, these books yes. in print. <laughs> this How do we this do just this? proves okay. that I will never understand, like, the big decision-making that happens in publishing houses, which, as we saw from that trial, like, the court case, they don't understand either. But I don't understand how, like, an author as, like, prolific and consistently popular as Tamora Pierce has, like, multiple huge series out of print. Like, mm-hmm. they're still publishing her books. She has those, like, new yeah. mare books that are coming out pretty recently. Like, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, you guys could be making so much money. <laughs> like, <sighs> Yeah. Okay. I'm going to make a petition. Because <laughs> I keep forgetting to do this. <laughs> People are interested. Uh, they're available as ebooks and audiobooks. Yes, that is also true. Um, 
Oh, I thought the living metal thing was really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I like, I don't know. I loved how Daja handled herself with the, the trading. St I feel like we need to talk yes. about the trader yeah. dynamics. Cause that was so yeah. interesting. Like what she thought mm -hmm. she wanted and then how she chose mm -hmm. to interact in that. And when they all came together and made the prosthetic leg for Polly M, it was so was beautiful. Oh. That was really, really nice. Yeah. But I yeah. also thought... Oh, I'm I, sorry, go ahead, Bree. Uh, but I also thought, like, there are people who feel like... who I can see there are people that would be like, I get that it was sweet that you made this leg, but it's the society that needs to change mm -hmm. their mind, not me needing to become, you know, fixed. And I use that word, you know, um, yeah. sarcastically. So that was one of the things that I think about because a lot of people talk about in books how, like, someone will have a disability and then they'll be okay. And people are like, what the fuck? That you, you're, you're, you're insinuating that disabled people um, or broken and need to be fixed or not whole. So um, that was something I did think about why uh, reading, even though I thought it was sweet. I appreciate that it was still a prosthetic, that like it wasn't like they used magic to kind of at her, almost like regrow her leg or anything. Like it felt, it felt more like a, a kind of mobility aid mm -hmm. than like the magical cure the disability trope but i yeah i definitely can see how that would that could have different effects on people mm -hmm. yeah and jessica says i'm gonna push back her leg was ill-fitting and it's important to have a well-fitted prosthetic yeah i mean i think that's that is true it's like better almost like better technology kind of um, yeah but i also think it's like you see how harmful it is that her community is only going to value her when she does have better mobility. Yeah. It's a societal thing. Yeah. But it also like this book also showed us how adults can be so, um, so fixated and tied to their beliefs of other groups of people um, and, and use it in discriminatory and, you know, violent ways. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was um, and to your point, which I forgot what the point was. I apologize. One thing, I guess, kind of related to the, the tree that Daja made, and this is not like a serious discussion point, but I just thought it was kind of funny how like, this is another example of like, because all of these kids magic is so strong and because they combined in ways that the adults didn't expect there's like so many times when one of them will do something like this and they're like huh that's weird and like the adults are like Daja did you just create life and she's like what like it's hard like oh what style like I just thought it was really funny and then they're to their credit they adapt very quickly and they're like okay so here's how we're going to approach your training now that we know that you guys are like terrifyingly powerful but yeah, I just think it's funny. Like she, she just, she created life out of metal and the kids are like, that's neat. And the adults are like having a panic attack in the corner. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. They're just, I mean, that's what kids do though. They don't think things, they're like, yeah, this is right. how things are. Right. Like, why is this yeah. weird? Yeah. Yeah. And especially because none of them really grew up like knowing they had magic. So I think that they don't have the like assumptions about what is supposed to be impossible. Yeah. Which I think that's one of the reasons they keep doing stuff like this. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Like they're not putting them in a box. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Vicky says, in regards to the gift of the leg, I liked that Daja gave the gift without making Polly M feel like she owes mm -hmm. something to Daja in return. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because they were teaching them a lot about trading. So I was like waiting for her to say, like, I gave you this, you owe me something. Um, mm -hmm. And it was really shining light of like, you can just be kind. Yeah. Jessica says wood prostheses were terrible on flesh. She needed that leg. Also, don't forget the leg was a hazard. Remember when it slipped on loose gravel? Yeah. 
Well, and then they gave her like care instructions for it and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think also, if I'm remembering correctly, um, Polly Ann like multiple times kind of in her words or just like kind of the way that she was like acting and moving, like she seemed to express like a wish that she had a better prosthesis. Like she didn't say that, but like mm -hmm. it, it felt like she was really wishing that she had like a better kind of aid for her. And so it felt That's more like yeah so it felt like the kids were like helping her get that rather than like saying here we got you something to fix you you know like it, it felt like Polly I'm like was um I guess more like it was it was kind of her idea even though it wasn't like it was a surprise for her mm -hmm. yeah. um they could have been a magic care magic cure in IMO if they had regrown her life right. in some way. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. That's fair. Um, okay, also I did go on to change.org because I'm like, let me go and see if I can create a, uh, <laughs> a petition. Because I would love it if they put these books back in print. They're so good. And the fact yes. that Scholastic doesn't want to put them in print, like why? Is it because of the when it was published? I don't know. I mean, they have other old stuff that's still in print. Yeah. Would it be considered like a would anything in the book be considered for like the band book people? I don't know. I don't. Well, and then all, but it's been for a while. And the other thing I didn't realize is the first book, Sandry's book, actually won a couple awards. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I almost wonder, I mean, I guess, I guess part of it is just that unfortunately things that are out of print, they don't get brought back super often, um, even if there is interest. But I wonder if maybe part of it is that like, these would possibly be harder to market with the way that publishers market middle grade versus like young adult or adult fantasy now, because like they are middle grade, but I think the, the kinds of stories that they're telling are things that maybe people who aren't familiar with middle grade wouldn't expect to see. So maybe they would try and sell them as YA, but they're not really YA. Like, I don't know. I wonder if that's part of it is that they're like, we don't know which like demographic to target. I don't know. I mean, I feel like especially this quartet is pretty firmly middle grade and I don't know that it's like that, I don't know, that out there from other things um i don't know yeah it's kind of weird this is why i was like maybe we start a petition and yeah. see yeah. if we can yeah i'm sitting here trying to think of why there's yeah. been some kind of cost analysis that i am aware of. yeah i don't know They are still publishing the horse and his boy in that book. Oh. Is what is that? <laughs> it's one of the it's Narnia one of the books. Chronicles of Narnia books. Oh, the horse and black boy! <laughs> Dang, not Narnia. <laughs> I can stay at the thrift store over here. They'd be in all copies. <laughs> I guess people ain't feeling it. Have any of y'all read The Chronicles of Narnia? Oh, yeah. Many yeah. times. They were my first fantasy books. Wow. I mean, they have, like, I have a lot of love for them, even though I know there are some things that don't hold up great about them. Yeah, that's kind <laughs> of, that's where I'm at as well. And it's like, I occasionally will get people who never read them as a kid. They're like, oh, do you recommend them? And I'm like, this is very complicated. <laughs> like, um. Yeah, I totally respect the people who don't want to read them or who didn't like them because of those elements. But I think also when you start reading something so young and you reread it so many times, it like, like you like bond to it before you like start thinking about that. But yeah. Um, yeah. And it's interesting because like, I mean, the horse and his boy, like the cultural elements really aged badly. <laughs> yeah. um, but it is interesting to me that like, 
the character who has like the strongest arc, I feel like is one of that culture. Like, I don't know. I feel like there are some things that he did pretty well for his time, but yeah, definitely not everything. <laughs> and who's the yeah. author? Um, something Lewis? Yes. 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 Lewis. Yeah. Yep. Um, other things about the star i think i'm like in my head i'm trying to like figure out what to write in the petition which yeah. is not i shouldn't be doing that like because it's yeah. very but I, it's like when you get an idea that's like i need to figure this out like i understand well also because i would love to have it so i could be like hey everybody go sign this thing. yeah yeah <laughs> you know um, but they're like write paragraphs about who this affects yeah. and why it's important like, this uh, affects. Well, we'll definitely have it ready for the fourth live show. Yes. So. yes. This affects children of this demographic, mm-hmm. seeing themselves in literature, blah, blah. Yep. This affects showing, uh, this affects parents who are unsure how to have complex conversations with their children. Okay. Um, <laughs> this affects parents and giving them different uh, parenting styles that allows for vulnerability from child to parent and parent to child. Um, You know, those things. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's just a good, a really good example of like, I don't know, it's fantasy that still feels like very modern today. Like, Mm. you know, they were published a couple decades ago and they hold up really well. And I feel Mm. like that in itself is kind of cool and like something that, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, that should be like celebrated is like sometimes, like sometimes older books do age well. (laughs) That's cool. And it it promotes equity no matter of ability, race, um gender which is something that we're you know going trying to go towards as people um you know we we want to make sure that everyone has a seat at a table and circle of magic is making Mm. sure everyone has a seat at the table and showing kids how to do that how to create Mm. your table how to craft who's going to be at the table oh this is great brie this is great you know what i mean (laughs) i do what i can Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> oh, and it highlights um, healthy relationships with children mm-hmm. and adults mm-hmm. that they are not directly related to. Yeah. Um, and it also um, highlight uh, effective communicating um, among your your age group. Yeah, and there's a lot of um, obviously a lot of cooperation in the series, like between the kids, especially. Mm-hmm. But there's also like an appreciation for what they're each like uniquely good at. Mm-hmm. Um, like we're seeing their abilities cross over a lot in this book, especially. But um, I I feel like there's still like an understanding and appreciation for what makes all of them like unique and special. Um, good. Yeah, Jessica. Speak your truth, Jessica. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're all confused. Why do so many white authors get it so wrong? Yeah. Because if I hear yeah. moonlight and golden as a description, <laughs> oh, what a time. You know what I-, I noticed too is that Tamara Pierce also also mentions when people are white like yes, which isn't a thing people were doing that. back then either like she because that's shocked uh, which me. yeah because people not assuming now are talking about doing that but she doesn't just assume that you that like everybody's white like it's like she yes. says yes and then she I just got excited it. because this i noticed a white that. boy <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's like I think about it's like there are fantasy books I read that are like published like this year or last year and I'm like Tamora Pierce was doing better decades ago like come on you guys but <laughs> like, you know what I think helped her her um her personal history and psychology because yeah. as therapists we have to use descriptors this is a white 
uh female identifying short hair brown eye you know you have to describe who you're who you're talking to so when once i read her right white boy i was like oh okay yeah <laughs> yeah yep. I love that you yeah. said that, Bethany, because I noticed too. I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. It's like, I yeah. Agree. Yeah. And I also, I feel like with, and especially we notice this, I think with Dasha's book, because she is the black character. I mm -hmm. feel like there is like, she's clearly put a lot of thought into Dasha's culture, but it doesn't come off. I mean, at least to me, and obviously I'm a white reader, but it doesn't feel like it's like exoticizing or like fetishizing it. Like it mm -hmm. feels like her culture is an important part of the book, but it's not, I don't know, like the, the way it's done doesn't feel like, ooh, and then we're going to sprinkle some culture in, <laughs> like, you know, it feels genuine. Yeah, it, I, I agree um, because oftentimes when you have a cast like this, the black character um, is always uh, don't have parents, don't have a good relationship with their parents, have all these different traumatic things happening to them. And then they have to rescue or be there or be some kind of like punching bag for the other characters. What I loved about this cast is they all had issues with their parents. Yeah. Everybody had issues. True. <laughs> she, well, Dodger wasn't an exception to the issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I said, yes, give them all trauma. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Equal opportunity yeah. trauma over here. Yes. Hey, everybody has trauma. <laughs> got it, got it. I said, go on, yeah. go on tomorrow. Go on yeah. with your dad, so. Well, and Dasha, one thing I like, kind of like, is that Dasha is not the caretaker of the group either. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say if anybody, it's probably Sandry. Yes. Yeah. And I also kind of related to that. I feel like um, the personality traits that Daja has, they don't seem to fall into like the problematic stereotypes. Like Daja doesn't have a temper, you know, like that's mm -hmm. Tris. <laughs> Tris is the right. one who gets real mad. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, she's pretty calm and like introverted and kind of yeah, no, I think that's that's true, which feels real. Yeah. And also, yeah. it's cool too how like I just was thinking about this. Her and Frostpine are both black, but they have different cultural like backgrounds and experiences. And like I thought mm -hmm. that was nice too. It's like oh, there's not just like one single group of black people and they all have the exact same life. They all know the same thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, way to go yeah. for not making us monolithic. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Jesus. That's true. Yeah. That's good. These books are just so good, you guys. Like, They're so like, good. <laughs> it's been it's been fun to read them and like i so now i mentioned i was like i think my kids might be into them and then my youngest was like okay well can i and i was like i don't really want you messing up my copies i'm gonna buy you guys copies so you can <laughs> they're out of print and hard to find <laughs> yeah exactly so i was like i'm just gonna buy another set <laughs> you guys can yes. this one probably a good idea mm -hmm. yeah yeah so i was like i see what you do to your books and that's not <laughs> yeah. which is fine <laughs> like i want them to just, is okay. They'll just plan accordingly <laughs> okay. um, you're, you're you know my life. husband's the same way like actually yeah, recently because he was like because he was he does he just like so you know what he was like we we're talking and he was interested in maybe trying the broken earth trilogy. And I was like, Oh, I was like, you know, I, I know he has just barely started. It'll probably take him a while to get through, but he started the first one. He's like, the writing's good. But I was like, I was like, yeah, you could read them. I was like, uh, you know what though? I'm going to buy you your own box set. Cause mine are signed and in nice condition. So I don't want you ruining my books. I'll buy you your own books. <laughs> yep. Because if you ruin, listen, one of the things I'll forever get mad, and I don't know if I told y'all, but a couple of weeks ago, my friend was like, Brie, I'm in line to see one of your favorite there. You're one of your favorite 
um, uh, authors. And I was like, who are you seeing? Switch the camera, N.K. Jemison. I was like, oh my God, I love you. I, 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 I just, I just think that you're awesome. She was like, hi, you're so pretty. I was like, no, you're like, you are everything. Oh, like, me, I, not, I, like, I couldn't. I was mouth. Oh my God. God. Had nothing. I love and, her. So and I was looking much. so cute. And I was like, am I on FaceTime with N.K. Jemison? <laughs> oh my God. Like, I freaked out and I freaked out so bad. I don't have a picture. I have nothing. But... <laughs> Uh, she did sign um, the the um, the Inherited series, and um, and um, the city we became for me. But I was just like, oh, oh my god, <laughs> I love it! Oh, that's so great, though. That's yeah, it. I've met her. I've gotten to see her a couple of times because she's got been at the Brooklyn Book Festival because she's local. But um, yeah, her she's so good. But yeah, my husband. I was like, yes, I would love you to read my favorite books, but just not in another copies. edition. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah. I also yeah. was like, hey, do you want to borrow one of my book sleeves for when you take your books to the playground with the kids instead of throwing them in a bag with water bottles and snacks? Oh, <laughs> So, yeah, we're making progress. It's like <laughs> reading stuff. That's cool. Yeah, it's good. yeah. It's good. You'll work up to the proper etiquette for reading stuff. It's fine. it's fine. Like I don't really mind as long as like I'm like we'll just get you your own books and like right, right. It just works out. It's all good. Um. Yeah. And he and and it's not like it's costing that much to do it because he doesn't read very many books. So it's only like a few a year. So it's like yeah, yeah. You know, we, can, we can swing it's, really, it's a manageable system all around. Yeah. Yeah. Bethany exactly. said you ain't on my level, so you know what I mean? <laughs> it's all right to you on my level. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't books that I cared so much about, it would be fine. But I'm like, not right. my signed Broken Earth trilogy. No. Right. Uh, right. If somebody touched mine, I would have to fight them. Uh, over the, <laughs> like, last year was, and yeah, the last probably year has been the first time I've gotten autographic copies. And I just refuse. I will fight <laughs> you in these streets. Listen, you know what I'm saying? it's fair. It's fair. Yeah. I mean, some I don't mind, but it's like some of my favorites. I'm like, no. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like some are reading copies and some are not. <laughs> yeah. It's yep. okay. Um, uh, yeah. One thing that I not also. Really? He listens to a lot of like other stuff on audio, but not really audio books. But the, I mean, the audio books are good. I've suggested this, but <laughs> whatever, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, sorry, Kara. What? No, no, you're fine. Um, something about the book that I was gonna say too is like with the friendship between the four kids that obviously like we're seeing more and more of in each book. I really love how even though they're now like so much more of a team and they really do care about each other and they're more like open about showing that it's not like their personalities are completely different. Like no. Tris and Briar are still like snipping at each other constantly, but now you can tell it's like affectionate snipping, <laughs> you know, it's like, I yeah. just always like that when it's like, all right, you're still recognizable as the same people. You're just like nicer yeah. about it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know about anybody else, but I got such a kick out of the, the scene where like Tris is like blowing the air for Daja and like, reading her book and Tosh is like Tris and she's like what I'm blowing the air I'm trying to read <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> yes it's relatable very relatable yeah. <laughs> there were there were like a few like really funny moments with their like mind speak thing like so many oh, times so they're cool. like emergency and they're like I'm busy and it's like what kind of emergency are we talking like regular emergency or like I'm on fire emergency exactly. <laughs> there's always emergencies for them yeah. oh it's true oh man that's great I'm so happy for Daja too that she's not trying she anymore yes and I feel like 
that's really such a good happen. example of what we were all talking about earlier where it's like there is still like she still has like value and respect mm -hmm. for like the traditions and like for her culture and like the you know like people that she has this connection with and she still values that while also recognizing like okay maybe there are some parts that i i don't feel this connection to her that i don't think are okay it's like we were saying about you can have like like you can you can buy into some of it and not all of it i guess buy yeah. in is kind of a funny way to say that but mm -hmm. um yeah, I really like that. I'm I'm so glad too that she got um, I forget what the word they used is, but like that she's back in like the traitor uh, yeah. lists. Yes, and has a new uh, staff. Yeah, it's not just blank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, I love that for her. That's awesome. I would love to see books about their adulthood. Yeah, well, the next four, they're teenagers. <clears throat> so, um, like, you do see them kind of grow up. And then I think, I haven't read all of them, but I think there are some later ones where they're older. Mm. I bet like those are out of print, too. <laughs> yeah. They're probably all out of print at this point. Yeah. Well, for now, we are going to read The uh, the Circle Opens, which is the second quartet, That's which is, like... Okay. They're, they're like teenagers and they're each going off on their own individual missions. So, yeah. Cool. Um, anything else with this? Let me check my notes. I, I also, I always appreciate in a multiple point of view book where it's like, I have a good time with all of the points of view. Like we don't, I don't think there's ever one where it's like, ugh, not this character again, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. I love all of them. Like, there are some, I guess, there are some parts of the story that I was, like, more engaged in than others, but it was never like, oh, man, we have another Triss chapter. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, same. I like it, and it's easy to, I feel like, easy to get through. Let's see. I loved the first two of those. Oh, right. You read the wrong, I forgot about that, right? <laughs> you read the wrong series. Renee, well, we are going to get to them. Yes. Did you read the wrong books or did you just read them early? Early. So you're extra prepared. Early. Renee's going to be ready for when we get to those. Yes. I'm looking forward to Briar's story. Best quote in this one from Briar. You don't see me having a conscience. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. such a Briar line, too. It I love is. It. <laughs> it is. There was that moment, too, where um, he said, I'm going to stick to being the tough guy. Yeah. <laughs> that moment where like Sandri is she's talking about like well what can we do to like help these people and like the adults were saying like well your uncle is already trying to take care of like everyone in this area so we don't know if there's much you can do and like Sandri was really upset by that she's like what's the point of having magic if you can't use it to help people and yeah. Tris and Briar look at each other like I don't want to help people but I'm not gonna say anything <laughs> like, like that's like, literally what the narrator said no, like <laughs> Yeah. Story checks out. <laughs> they show up as themselves. They do. Mm -hmm. I love it. But also, Briar was devastated that he destroyed those, uh, the saffron curses. I like Briar being like the tough guy, like ruffian kid and everything, but also being like, I heard a plant. I just. Yeah, it's so mm -hmm. good. Was it Briar so, like, when they were first... <laughs> I can't remember. Was it Briar when they were tasting the food and he kept eating it? Like, <laughs> he's bit. like, like yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, it's been a while since I got food poisoning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone else hesitating, like, wait, should we eat <laughs> something? Dude, like. <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, I forgot what this was like. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was cracking up. I said, put you first, man. Like, you hungry. I give it. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's good. They're such, like, clear characters, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love it. Yep. Exactly. Jen. <laughs> yes, they didn't want to help for free. 
<laughs> Why would they do that? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, Daja, like, was, was like, I don't want to make a ton of money off a mistake I made. Yeah. So, you know, I liked that, that she, she was like, I'm going to try to help Polyam and think about this as, like, a long-term relationship. And she also, when they were kind of concluding the bargain, she was like, the only thing I want is to not be trying she anymore. So she did have, like, it's not like she did it for nothing, but, yeah, she did have, like, um, it wasn't just about getting, like, the best bargain that she could. It was, like, a long-term relationship. She was planning ahead. Yeah. Did anyone else get hungry every time they had a meeting because they were eating all that food? <laughs> I was like, this sounds really good. Now I want some baklava. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> I'm going to no, say I- one thing that grossed me out. Only because adult relationships with children, I watch like a hawk. That's only. But they're one of the characters. I don't know if it's this book or the third book because I won't lie. Some of it blended in because I read uh-huh. them both back to back. Um, when one of the characters kind of broke something and and of of a man's like his shirt or his belt or something. Oh yes. And then, like she was like, you know, I'll fix it. I'll pay for it. And and the other man was like, how did you do it? And she was like, I don't remember even how I did it. But oh, um, yeah. you know, was that book three? No, this, this that was, was this book, one. which, it was which is book three. And book then three. And, and then that adult kissed her on the hand. That kind of throws me. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it's because she's nobility, though. Like, I like I hear you. I guess I, I think. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I, I, I think I took it like you did, Bethany, as more of like a courtly gesture kind of thing. But yeah. um, I can I, mean, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I, I think it's because she's like a lady, you know, and so it's, right. I took it as like a like, I don't know. It's like a thing they used to do, I guess, right? Yeah. It was like that. Yeah. It was, it grossed me out, like, uh, that it compared to the words that was used. And I can't remember mm-hmm. what the words were used, but it, mm-hmm. the whole, it kind of. Oh, the vibe was weird. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the okay. part I felt was weird was like, yeah, some of the dialogue, because it was almost like he was flirting with her. Exactly. That's what I I, thought. I noticed that more than like the kissing hand thing. And um, then the kiss of the hand, I said, oh, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The squire's jacket with silver thread. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you're good remembering names, man. Oh, that's good. I will say a squire would probably be like a teenager, so like a few years older. Right. I was so probably that. so he probably wasn't like an adult. He was probably like sixteen or something. So, I mean not still not great, but like right. still inappropriate, you know? but not as like disturbing. Not as like, I hear you. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes. yes, agree, Renee. There's so many books where the kids' characters agree. blend together. Yes. These are so different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I love agree. how they balance each other. Like, they're all so distinct, but um, yeah, it's like they're they're like such a good fit for each other as like mm-hmm. this little friend group. Their yeah. circle. Yeah. I love that they call it that. Some characters blend. And the thing is, I like POVs when they are um, executed a certain way i haven't figured out what that certain way is but i felt like it was done really well um in search circle of magic but there's there's series like karen mcmagnus where it's like eight teenagers and they all feel the same to me mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah it's hard to differentiate between them do i read most books that she's published yes but i cannot i just know stevie and that's it. That's where it um, ends. <laughs> well, again, though, I wonder how much of it is because of Tamara Pierce's background working with actual kids and teenagers, you know, because I feel like if you don't, if you haven't gotten to know a diverse cross section of young people, where are you drawing your character work from, right? Like, it's going to feel kind of samey. That's facts.
Yeah, like I don't know that Karen and McManus could write a diverse group of friends effectively. Uh -oh. Like I would have a really hard time seeing her do anybody. It, it, who ain't, it ain't KM. KM ain't got that skill. <laughs> He don't have it. <laughs> hey, I mean, got that skill. I'm telling you now. And 4K, I'm telling you. They were all, Karen just knows how to write from her lens. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Oh. I had to give me a snack, you know? I needed a snack. <laughs> all right. I am back in that thing. Just needed a. <laughs> Needed a little fruit snack, Some you know, nice. get us ready for the day. Yep. I don't open it. Wow. What a time to be alive, to have a, a nice fruit snack. <laughs> <laughs> the other, like, recently I had, did not plan it this way, but I think I had, like, cereal and then like a cookie for lunch at one point because I was in a rush and I'm like am I a kindergartner like is that what's happening I had like Cheerios and a cookie and I'm like yeah I'm just getting in touch with my five-year-old self <laughs> I totally get that. that's great oh my gosh well we've been doing this for like an hour so mm -hmm. Let me know if people have any like final thoughts or topics they wanted to cover. I have to like pack to go on vacation tomorrow. So. Oh, get out. Get out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm packing tomorrow and then leaving Sunday, but. Oh, I, <laughs> yeah. I thought you said I'm packing today. We're leaving tomorrow. No, 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 no. Tomorrow, I'm, I, I planned for tomorrow to be because, yeah, that'll be fun. So I'm like, I'm just, I have videos scheduled. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. Good. <laughs> nice. I Proud love the video schedule. I'm surprised I got video scheduled to the first week of April. I mean, August. What? Mm -hmm. That's impressive, Bree. That's great. I, I have I'm them for like... Day. I guess. Yeah. Um, thanks, Vicky. Agreed. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> It'll be nice. Ooh, mm -hmm. yeah. Only a carry on. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like packing for just me is fine, but it's like managing for all of like for the kids and everything. That's where it's like, it's a lot of, a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. One thing that, oh yeah. The hot spring baths at the castle and them going through the pipes. That was cool actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like the engineering stuff is so interesting. And I am someone who doesn't always love that being dwelled on in books. Like I can kind of not, not get lost exactly, but it's like, I don't think I'm picturing this with the amount of detail that you want me to be. But I think she does a really good job with it. I feel like there is a real art to like the appropriate amount of description, especially in fantasy. And I feel like Tamar Pierce nailed true. it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because they're like little books, but they feel yeah. very full, and I don't know. Yes. They stick with you, too. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for joining us, and um, we will be back at the end of July to talk yes. about briar's book <laughs> that's gonna good. be a good time i can already tell <laughs> yeah it'll be fun let's get into it yeah we'll be here yes we will we will all right thanks everyone have a good night and i will finish up that petition this evening yes. and yes. i'll you post got it. it somewhere so see if we can get these maybe back in print who knows yeah let's like try and honestly, I, will do I don't that know as if, well. I don't know if Tamora Pierce uses any social media, probably not, but like if we could get her to share it, that would be great. I think like, she's on Twitter. We'll okay. See. And she's pretty active on Facebook from what I know. Like okay. she's a Facebook group she's pretty active on, so. All yeah. Right. Well, cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Have a good night everybody. See you later. See you.